I've been creating motion graphics for over three years, and in that time I have created a huge range of motion graphics, some great and some not so great. And in this video, I will show you exactly how you can create your own stunning motion graphics to impress clients and impress audiences. I will start off by sharing with you the three pillars of creating great motion graphics. And after, I will then fully walk you through how I created this motion graphic in under 10 minutes. The three pillars of creating great motion graphics are design, flow, and representation. Without context, this kind of sounds like random words, but let me explain. Design is the process of actually making the motion graphic look good. And the proper word for this is motion graphics design. So a pretty simple name. And motion graphics design is half video editing and half art, to be honest. And it definitely falls more into the subjective and creative part of video editing. And because of this, there's no right or wrong way to do motion graphics design. But if you want to know how I personally do motion graphics design, then you can check out Skill Cut through the top link in the description. Because at this current point in time, there are two sections about motion graphics design. And in these, I explain how I personally do motion graphics design in a very effective way. So if you're interested in that and also interested in leveling up the rest of your video editing skills as well, then I would highly recommend that you check out Skill Cut through the top link in the description below. The second foundation of motion graphics is flow. And what I mean by flow is the way that the whole thing flows together. This is very important because a simple motion graphic that flows well will always look better than a complex motion graphic that doesn't flow well. And if you look at all of the biggest YouTubers in the world with the best editing, the one thing that all of their styles will have in common is that they all flow well. So when you are creating motion graphics, don't overcomplicate it. Just focus on making it flow well. The last foundation I will share with you before we move on to the actual editing is representation. The word word representation can have many meanings, but in this context, what I mean by representation is the way you represent a message or feeling with a motion graphic. Most of the time when editors edit motion graphics, they are doing it as part of a video or film or advert. And motion graphics are often used to visually show what is being discussed or said in the video instead of just using a roll or stock footage, which means how you actually represent what is being said in the video or the message which is being conveyed matters just as much as how the graphic looks or how it flows. For example, imagine if a video is discussing digital banking and you make a motion graphic around football. It doesn't matter how good that motion graphic about football is because it just doesn't suit or explain what is being said in the video. Like it would just make absolutely no sense and the audience or client would just be confused. Which means it's very important to know how to represent what is being discussed in a video with a motion graphic that actually makes sense. And this brings us on to the next part. Let's just say I'm editing a video and I want a motion graphic when the person speaking is saying there are several different paths to wealth. Then I would try to create a motion graphic like the one I'm about to make. So now let's go ahead and actually make that motion graphic. So as normal, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new composition. I'm gonna name mine Money Tree Motion Graphic. I'm then gonna import all of the assets which I'm going to be using today. You can find a link to them in the description below. I'm now going to start off by trying to create the floor. So I'm going to import this grid background and I'm going to make the layer 3D. I'll press R to open up the rotation and I'll change the X rotation to minus 88. Then I'll just position it down here. And then I'll search up in the effects and presets motion tile and I'll add that onto the grid background. Then I'm going to increase the output width and height until it looks a bit like this. But this is actually a bit too long so I'll just open up the position and I'll move it back like this. So now the grid covers a bit less than 50% of the screen. I'm then going to import this blue light leak overlay and I'm just going to I'm just going to scale it up to it fits the composition and I'm just going to move it down so and then it covers the same amount of the screen as the grid background like this. So now it's just covering the floor. I'm then going to toggle switch modes and I'm going to make sure that the mode is hard light. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets tint and I'll add this onto the grid and I'll map black to white and map white to black. And this means that now the um, lines are black. I'm then just going to create a plain black solid and this will act as the background for the floor. And then I'll add this below the rest of the layers. And then I can decrease the opacity of the grid and it will look a bit like this. I'm then going to highlight all the three of these layers and I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate them and I'll move these three new layers to the bottom. 
I'm going to make the um, grid background not 3D anymore. And this means that the floor will not be like a floor and it will just be a flat image again. And then I'm going to move all three of these layers up to the top. So and then they are now like covering the entire screen. And this means that they're not like they're no longer like the floor. And they're now like the actual background, which is going to be behind. But right now I can't see anything because the like background, the black background from the original floor is covering it and I forgot to move that down with the floor as well. So I just need to move that down so and then it's just like the same size as the floor because I want this to only be below the floor and not below the rest of the screen. And now as you can see we have like a background which is like the flat wall and then we have the um, the floor which is at an angle and as you can see that looks pretty good. It won't look nearly as good on the recording as it does in um, like on my screen because it's not like my recording software is not as good as my um, my editing software but this looks great in my actual um on my screen and now we have the uh, background like setting so now i'll actually start with the other editing so then i'm just going to import this money tree picture and i'll position it and scale it up so and then it's where i want it to be so it looks like it's away from the camera i'm just going to play around with the position and scale a bit and then when i'm happy with it i'm then just going to search up in the effects and presets glow and i'll add this onto the tree I'm going to slightly um, decrease the glow threshold and I'll increase the glow radius so and then it looks a bit like this so and then it's glowing. I'm then going to add a vignette to this whole thing to make it just look a bit more interesting. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'll search up in the effects and presets vignette and I'll add this onto the adjustment layer. And as you can see now everything's just a bit darker. I kind of want this like path of light um, going up to the tree so it's like almost like creating a path. So to do that I'm going to add the gradient ramp effect onto the floor and I'll add that onto the black solid, which is the background of the floor. And now it's a bit lighter and I'm just going to play around with the uh, end color. So, and then it's a bit gray. So it's gray instead of being so bright. And as you can see, now we have a path of light almost towards the tree. It almost looks like it's a, a reflection of the light of the tree, which looks great as well. It just makes things just to look a bit more interesting. And it also kind of gives off that like path of light guiding you towards the money tree, which looks quite good as well. But this is just subjective. So if you don't think this looks great, you wouldn't need to add it. And now I'm going to get started on the paths. So what I'll do is I'll go up to the pen tool at the top and I'm just going to create my first path, which is going to be the one on the left. And I'll make it this some slight bendy line like this. It's not going to be that like complex. It's just going to be a, like a curved line like this. And when I'm happy with where it is, like in terms of the actual size of it, I'm then just going to increase the stroke of it as well. Make sure there's no fill color as well. Just make sure it's a stroke. And I'm just going to make the layer 3D and I'll make the X rotation the same as the floor. So minus 88. I'm then just going to position it down like I did with the floor as well. And then I'll just increase the scale, like the size of it until it looks like pretty good. So I basically want it to start off screen and then I want it to end like at the tree. So and then it's creating a path to the tree. And I'll maybe just adjust the rotation of it as well. So and then it looks like it's coming from the side. And actually it's created this massive thing at the back. So I'm just going to make it a bit less small at the back. So and then it's just like this. But you want it to start just slightly off screen as well. So and then it's like it looks like it's coming from behind the camera. And when I'm happy with what I've got, I'm then just going to move on to the second path. So for this one, I'll create more of a wiggly line like so. But again, I still want it to go from behind the camera to the tree. And then I'm also just going to do what I did earlier. So I'll just make it 3D and I'll make the X rotation minus 88. And then I'll just move it down like I did for the other one. And then I'll just lengthen it. So and then it looks like it's the same, like it's going to the tree. And actually I'll scale it down so and then you can see all of the wiggles. Um, if you could say it like that. And then, um, oh yeah, I'll just decrease the scale and then it, it looks a bit like this. But then it's just created, it made it look really thin. So I'll also increase the stroke of it later, but I'll do that in a sec when I just like move the position of it until it looks right. But yeah, I'm just going to try and make it so and then it looks like it's going to the tree. And then when I'm happy with what I've got, I'm just going to increase the stroke. So and then it's roughly the same size as the um, left line. And then when I'm happy with that one, I'm then going to start on my third one. So I'm going to get the pen tool again. And this one, I'm going to try and create a really like bendy line. So it's almost going around the whole screen and back towards the tree because I don't want, I want these lines to all look at different because as I said, the like message for this video, I guess is like, there's several different paths to wealth and I want the paths to look different. So, and then they're not like the same and it just makes it look like there's different paths. So, and then I'm just going to make the layer 3D again and I'll make the X rotation minus 88 and I'll move it down and then I'll just position it until it looks like how I want it to look like. So it's coming from behind the screen 
like, and then it's going to go towards the tree. I'm just going to move the actual shape as well so then it just bends towards the tree like this. But it kind of looks like it's like almost not the same um, rotation as the other ones. It kind of looks like it's floating in the air, like the middle bit, which is strange. So to change that, even though it's not, if you actually look at the rotation, it's not. But I'm going to try and make it look more natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to increase the, actually no, I'll just decrease the Y rotation. So and then it looks a bit like this. This looks a lot better. And these are my three lines. I'm actually just going to play around with the stroke of all of them as well. I'll actually make them all, I'll make all three of them just a bit less um, thin. I'll just make them all a bit thinner. So I'll decrease the stroke of all three of the lines. And this is what we've got so far. Now I'm just going to make all of the lines actually look cool. So I'll go into the effects and presets and I'm going to search up turbulent noise and I'll add this onto the first line. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets um, gradient ramp and I'll add this onto the same line. I'll make the start color that this like the first color and I'll make the second color like at the end. So and then it's gradient is there's a gradient from the start to the end and I'll make the first color like this purple and I'll make the end color this um, this blue. I'm going to increase the ramp scatter a bit and I'll change the blend with original. So and then it's just blended a bit. So and then you have that turbulent displace. Um, you have the turbulent noise um, texture coming through as well. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to search up glow and I'll add this onto the line as well to make it look just that bit better. I'm then going to increase the glow, the glow radius as well so until it looks a bit like this. And I'll decrease the glow intensity to around 0.5. And yeah, that looks great. But I'll just increase the threshold to around like 50%. And this is what we've got so far. And then when I'm happy with what I've got, I'm then just going to copy all three of these effects and I'm going to paste it onto the other like lines. So I'll go to the second line here and I'll paste it onto there. But even though this blue, this blue for the line looks great, it's not that I want it to be the same for all of them. So I'll just change the position of it. So and then it looks the same as the other one. So I'll play around with the position. So and then the purple's here. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm going to paste it onto the third line. And again, even though I really like this blue actually, and maybe I should have, maybe I should have made it blue, but I'm just going to play around with it. So and then it's purple to blue like this. And as you can see, the gradient is the same for all of them. But now I'm going to animate the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this arrow here and I'll go, go to the add bit and I'll add trim paths. Then I'll open up trim paths and I'll keyframe the end at zero at the start. Then I'll do the same thing for the other two lines. So I'll go to the second line and I'll open up trim paths and I'll keyframe the end at zero percent. And actually I've gone right to the third one. So if I find the second one here and I do the same thing, I add the trim paths effect and I keyframe the end at zero percent at the start. Then I'm going to go forward by, I don't know, maybe around one or two seconds. And then I'm going to then change the end for all of them to 100. So 100 there, 100 here, and 100 here. And as you can see, the lines are now fit like animating. So and then they go from the start to the end. So they're like, they're almost like the line, the paths are like being made in front of us like this. And then I'm going to highlight all of these keyframes and I'll press F9 to easy ease them. And then I'll go into the graph editor and then we'll just play around with the graph until it looks great. So I'll just move this right toggle all the way to the left. And as you can see, that already looks quite good. But I'll play around with the graph as well until it looks exactly how I want it to look. So now this, there's like a steep peak in the middle. I shall move it just a bit to the left as well. So as you can see, it goes like slow, fast, slow. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this adjustment layer up to the top. And this is where I'm going to animate this, um, like the camera effect. So, and it looks like it's zooming in. So I'm then going to search up in the effects and presets transform, and I'll add this onto the adjustment layer. Then I'm going to keyframe the scale at the start of 100. Then I'm going to go forward to when the trim paths effect ends. And I'm just going to increase the scale of this transform effect. So and then it's around like 117 and then I'm going to highlight these keyframes and I'll press F9 and I'll do the same thing I did with the um, trim paths effect but for this um, for this like scale effect like so. So as you can see now the camera scales in at the same speed as the lines and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this like the signature Eman Gatsi kind of like 
glitchy low frame rate look just to see how that looks on this effect because it normally looks great with these kind of motion graphics so i'll add that just to spice up the video a bit more as well so i'll search up in the effects and presets posterize time and i'll add this onto the adjustment layer i'm going to change the frame rate to 16 and as you can see now there's a bit more of that glitchy effect and what i'll also add is i'll go to the effects and presets and i'll type up turbulent displace and i'll add this onto the adjustment layer as well I'll change the amount to 25 and the size to 2.5. I'll go into the evolution options and I'll um, alt click on the random seed to open up this like bit of code and I'll type up random um, and then these two like brackets and in, in between the brackets I'll put four. Then I'm gonna go to the start of the bit of text and I'll press enter to go up a line. And then at the top line, I'll just type up posterize time and in between these brackets, I'll just put six. And now we will have the signature Iman Gatsi low frame rate glitch you look. And this is the motion graphic complete.